so often I get this question, how do you saw straight? And especially, how do you cross cut? And so many people say to me, I've tried all my life, I can't get a square cut on a piece of wood, no matter what I do. The important thing is that you do have the right saw, you have a well sharpened, well set saw, all of those things. But let's assume that you've got that right, how do you cross cut a piece of wood? So I'm gonna show you how I would do it for a couple of scenarios. One, um, if you've got a, a stud that you want to cross cut or some joists or something like that, uh, that's one different level of refinement that you might need to work with, that you don't need fine joinery. You're not trying to construct this perfect joint, but you want something that looks fairly neat uh, and, and nicely done. So. If that was the case, I would just simply pull one square line on this face and another square line on this face. Now, usually you'd do this on saw horses or some trestles or something like that, but I'm in the shop, I'm doing it here. So what I would do first of all is I've got my two lines. When you start the saw, if it's a sharp saw and it's well set, everything's in tune, you don't want to press the saw down into the wood, especially if you're new to woodworking. You start the saw on a forward stroke, not a back stroke. I've got my thumb on the side of the line, it's lining up the cut here, and I go very, very lightly across the grain like this. Once I've gone in that three quarters of an inch, I can change direction and go this way. Now, in this case, I'm going to clamp it on the end of the bench. It's a safety issue most of the time. You want safe practices. This will just secure it, stop it slipping a little bit. Once I've gone in there, I can now drop my saw in here, drop my hand here, and allow this square cut to keep me square to the, the piece of wood. Now, cross cut. Let that saw just ease through the cut. Don't force it. You're not in a hurry. You want a decent cut. Listen for the breakout. And there you've got it. That's your 2x4, 4x2, depends on which continent you're on. And that's that cross cut. Nicely cut. That's ready for nailing in place. That's for your general carpentry, that kind of thing. Now you'd be doing it, as I said, on saw horses probably. So that's my method for that, and that's a pretty standard method for carpenters, and that's fine. So what do we do when we get to a, a point where we want something a little bit more refined? And that's what I would do. Now, if I've got a, a, a piece of wood like this, I want to cross cut this, take this waste wood off here. I use a knife wall, and I go all the way around my piece of wood like this. And that knife wall should come out right on that corner like that. Now, in this case, what I'm going to do is very similar to what I just did, but instead of using the pencil line, which isn't as definitive, the knife wall gives me the definition, the exactness that I want. Put your thumb on the side, fingers on here, pull your body, arrange your legs and feet, and then just square cross cut across here. Now I've got that delineated, it's guiding that saw, that furrow is making sure the saw stays square. Very light, not a bulldog grip, you want lightness in this. Go down here, start dropping the hand with the stroke, down, 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 like that. So we're already about halfway through this piece of wood. In the vise again, just for safety, this is your third hand. This one then goes in, follows that path, and drop, 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 like this again, just the same way. We don't have very much wood left now, so we're going to go on edge again. And then I come down this face here, gently, and I'm listening for the wood. And what I end up, I've got no breakout, I've got a very nice crisp line, if I needed it planing, I could plane it, but that would generally be good enough for the end of a tenon or something like that. So that's just another method that I love. 
I've used it all my life. It gives me the crispness that I want. If I've got a board like this, and I want several pieces out of this, if this was a long length, I would simply take this, put my knife wall where it needs to be on whichever piece I want to keep here. Now I go, I move over about a millimeter, slide my knife up to it, like that. So I've got a parallel cut on there. Then I go onto the edge, do the same, into the knife nick, move over. And then I'm on the back face or the underside, like this. Into the knife nick each time. So I'm dead parallel. Now this gives me the kind of cut I might expect to get off off say a machine or something like that. So it just gets me a little bit closer to where I want to be. Oops. And then I drop this in the vise. Most of this would be surrounding bench joinery, which is what I'm focusing on here. And then I just put my finger up against the edge let those teeth kiss the surface, not much pressure, and then follow down in between the cuts, like that. Once I've done that, I go back to my bench top, or I could go vertical in the vise, I'd be perfectly happy to do that. So this is really just more of a safety, keeping the wood uh, safe and my hands safe, so on. Then I come along here, let that, that previous cut guide the saw now. Right in between the, the knife walls. And see what we got, we've got pieces of wood with no fuzz, no break out, this one's ready for the next cut, the next cut, the next cut along the length, and that's how I would cut that. Now we're talking about hand saws here, of which every saw that was ever made was made for a hand. So in that case, a tenon saw would be a hand saw too, but we generally call these back saws or tenon saws. Here's another category. This is where we want to cross cut, usually smaller sections of wood. So if we want, like in this case, I've already cut my sides of my tenons, the cheek, and I want to cut the shoulder line now, in here, into the knife nick, along here, and then onto this face here. So I've got my knife nick, so now I would go all the way around now, but in this case, now you can do something else. If you want to, you can put a little step down with a wide chisel like this. Just at the start of the cut, you can go all the way across if you want to. Then your saw goes right up against that knife, Nick. And you lower the hand. Now let me just move over a little bit here. Because what I'm gonna do now is I've got that square cut. Now I drop my hand, drop, 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 drop. Then back up to the top and square across. And I listen. Because the pitch changed. And then I've got this beautiful shoulder line again. Nice crisp line. This is my waist wood. So I was cutting on the waist side of the line. And that's how I would generally cross cut using any of the cross cut saws. It works great. Mm -hmm.